Hi everybody, Mature Simmer here. So welcome to another episode of the Non-Aviator Flight Sim series. This episode is going to cover takeoff in the flight process. Um, if you're not sure how to get here and you don't know how to taxi your aircraft, you can go watch this short video here. But basically you will taxi your plane to lines that look like this, which are basically the whole short markers of where you would stop and you'd be waiting for ultimately air traffic control to give you clearance. Now again in Microsoft Flight Simulator most people fly without air traffic control uh, but if you're just thinking it through and trying to understand the process and if eventually you aspire to do something with air traffic control whether it's VAT sim with other people or using some of the other tools uh, you know this is kind of where you're then getting ready to get ready to take off so you'll be normally sitting here waiting for clearance and then you'll be given clearance to enter the runway and then take off you may be told to stop you may be told just you know you're cleared to take off and you can just taxi out and go so we're gonna do a little bit more of that non-air traffic piece because we're not going to be introducing all that complexity in here into that but we're here at the runway and so what you want to do before you get rolling is you just kind of want to do final checks and make sure everything's ready so in this plane this is setting my trim so we'll end up talking about trim a little bit uh, when we talk about uh, more kind of VFR or prop plane cruising and so forth because otherwise the aircraft usually takes care of it if you've got autopilot and GPS you don't really need to worry about it but when you are taking off you do typically want your elevator kind of in the, the spot that is being indicated that it should be and you may get warnings otherwise so for example let me trim this inappropriately so now you can see it's just it's suddenly telling me no takeoff because it's telling me okay the way the elevators configured it's basically going to be fighting against you you know in that case uh, it would be pulling up substantially and the plane would be trying to rotate really before it's ready and you'd be fighting that unnecessarily as stupid as it sounds you want to make sure your landing gear is down um, you know, but that it's really engaged and locked into place. If you're using anything, uh, you know, getting ready for the autopilot, so for example, I'm configured here where I've got my autopilot ready to engage what's called the lateral navigation, which is why it's L nav. And then I also have the vertical, which is V nav, which is vertical navigation, which is the up and down you know and and that's ready to potentially go either I've got a, a little bit of a problem here with with that you know, but you, you just want to make sure that things look right so that was a good example actually because flight level change is not something I wanted I want the aircraft to be doing its own navigation and not overriding it with something like that again I'm not going to explain what flight level change is that that's for a different video eventually you know eventually that's that's certainly more of an advanced topic that you're probably you, you could do flight sim all the time and never know that and you'd probably in most cases be okay depending on exactly what you were doing you know and I've got altitude set you know that hey we'd, we'd be at 25,000 and we'd be ready to go and then my flaps are set to 15 I can also double check that I've got my engine guards on in this plane so that I don't mistakenly drop something on the run button and shut the engines off, you know, or press it inadvertently. So, you know, the, those are kind of the final checks you're looking at. Really, flaps, any flight assistance you need. You may be setting your heading. You might want to be checking, hey, if I suddenly have an engine problem, where do I go? That, again, is more advanced but at the basic level make sure your flaps are ready for takeoff and make sure your flight computer or any navigation you're going to be using immediately afterwards is ready to go 
So I am in that situation here. So I will release my parking brake. And I will taxi out to the runway. But I will not go ahead and immediately take off. So again, normal processes you would be doing with taxiing. You just need to get the plane rolling. You don't want to be going incredibly fast or anything. So don't spin your engines up to full throttle. That This is not the time to do that. And again, I've got my reference point that I use. Now these yellow lines are not necessarily lines that are you, you're using to enter the runway. Those are typically taxi lines for exit. So the guidance that I've seen is you want to give yourself as much runway as possible. So rather than turning in on that exit line, you know, you can get set up on kind of these are nicely known as the uh, piano keys. You know, just because of the way they're painted. And they're usually at the end of any major runway. Obviously, if you're landing on a grass field or something, you're not going to have any lines. You're just going to have grass. But you're giving yourself as much space as possible. And you can see, you know, we're... We, in essence, maybe could have come in on that line, but sometimes the lines are much sharper than that to, to get you there. So at this point... We're going to talk about what, what happens in takeoff before we do it, because it all happens very quickly. I will try to reference it as I go. But basically, we're going to release our parking brake. We're going to get our engines up to full throttle. Um, in an airliner, it's TOGA, which is, uh, I think, takeoff. I, I don't know exactly what it stands for. It's not necessarily important to understand the term. You just need to understand you're basically putting the engines at full power so that you can roll as fast as you can and get ready to go. You then need to understand what the rotation speed of your aircraft is. And so if you're looking in your aircraft manuals or you're looking at the information, that's usually referred to as VR, which is velocity of rotation. And so that is, in essence, when you're going to pull back on the stick. So if you need to understand how a plane flies and the controls you use for it, I'm going to link to the video here of, of the flight controls and so forth and, and how you do that. But you're going to basically rotate to get ready for a climb when you hit the VR speed. For this plane, that's about 120. So that's what I'm going to be looking for here. Again, you need to know where you're looking. So you need to know where your speed indicator is. It's here on this plane. My altitude indicator is here on this plane. The engine information is here. So that 62% is basically the power. You're, all, you're also going to see lines go up here as I add more power. But basically this will get to 100, a little more than 100 when I'm at full power. And then... You know, I know I'm doing that, and you're rolling down the runway, tr basically trying to get to that VR speed, 120 in this case, where you can then pull up and take off. Then you're going to usually have an indicator on your aircraft that's going to look like this. So you can see there's these little dividing lines. This one's marked 10, this one's marked 20. I know it's a little hard to see because basically this is part of my navigation that I have set that is basically telling me I need to turn the plane in this direction to get on the line that I'm expecting to be on. I apologize that that's in the way but as you can figure if you divide things basically each of these is 2.5 so your horizon is is zero and then we have 2.5 5 is the little slightly bigger line 7.5 10 12.5 15 17.5 20 and so on and so that is your angle, what's called your angle of attack, which is AOA here. Those are all kind of related. Typically, to again not scare the heck out of your passengers if you have any, you're not normally climbing out at more than 10 degrees. You're going to target between 5 and 10 as kind of a, a nice climb out angle. To give you some perspective, when you're landing, the typical glide slope, which you can think of as the angle that you're coming in and you're descending and landing, is 3 degrees. 
So most of the calculations for approaches and things like that are done assuming you're coming down at 3. So even if you're taking off at 5, you're nearly double what your descent angle is. And obviously if you're up at, at 10, you know, you're over 3 times what the descent angle is. So you can start to see if you start getting to 15 or 20, uh, people are going to probably be white knuckling it back there in their seats. Now, again, in certain airports, that may be necessary. There may be obstacles at the end of the runway. These are all things as a pilot you need to be aware of so that you don't run into a problem. You know, there are landing challenges that you can do in Microsoft Flight Simulator. You can create your own landing challenges. You can decide, you know, where you're going to be. Similarly, takeoff challenges. You know, I've, I've done flights um, out of the airport in Gibraltar uh, over there at the Mediterranean by, you know, near Spain. There's a big rock there, you know, the Rock of Gibraltar. I think, you know, you've, you've probably heard of it. That has all kinds of rules around how you depart, how you come in. The length of the runways are very short. Um, so, you know, that would impact things. So as a pilot, these are all the things you really need to know to be successful. But the nice thing in the flight simulator is, hey, you get to try these things out, you get to get familiar with them, and the better you get, the more realistic you can you can model your sessions and you can really really go over the top and be super super prepared uh, over time I hope to give you enough information that you can do that if you want but for now we're just trying to give you the basics of, of what you need to do to take off so you're taking off between 5 and 10 and then sometimes you'd be given a, you know a point to climb out to but again, if there's no ATC or you're just flying, like, hey, I've set my flight level at 250, 25,000 feet, so I'm just going to basically try to get there, and, you know, I'm going on my heading and so forth. But all we're going to cover here is basically that initial takeoff. So you're going to take off, and part of what you're then doing in takeoff, because per the flying thing, We've adjusted our surfaces to increase, in this case, lift, because obviously that's what we need. We need lift to leave the ground. And we need that lift to counteract our weight, which is what's, what gravity is doing by pulling us down. And so that's why we have the flaps set to usually the first setting. Sometimes it's, you know, a couple up, but, you know, in this case it's 15 degree flaps. So if I go out and I look at my surfaces, you know, these are my flaps. They're not level with the wing, they're down. This is going to create airflow in such a way that I will have and generate more lift, which allows me to take off at a slower speed because I'm going to have enough, enough lift being generated that I can take the weight of the aircraft. Okay, so the other thing you may be aware of on takeoff and so forth is there's something called V1 speed, which is slightly lower than um, VR speed. And V1 speed basically means that you would be able to, as long as you're going that fast, um, so you have to hit VR speed to rotate off and really truly take off. But once you're up, if you slow down a little bit to V1 speed, you should be able to maintain your climb even on one engine. So obviously your plane needs more than one engine for a V1 speed to make any sense. And then you'll hear things, and these are, so these are numbers normally at air, on airliners and, and so forth. But then there's a V2 speed, which basically is you're not going to be able to safely stop the aircraft in time before you run out of runway if you've reached V2 speed. So you basically must take off or you're going to have a problem. And again, we don't have any um, kind of automatic brakes or rejected takeoff type of things in the Cessna, but we'll talk about those type of things perhaps at some point in the future when we're talking about airliners and so forth, because those are good things to know. That, that you have those available for you. Uh, so once you're airborne then, you're going to want to start decreasing drag so that the plane can get more speed and get moving. And that will help with climb because the faster you go, the more lift you'll generate. And obviously the faster you go, the sooner you'll get to your destination, which is kind of the point of flying. So you're going to lift your gear 
basically the indication of lifting your gear is you have a positive, what's called a positive rate of climb, which basically means your vertical speed, which means, you know, how, how far you're going away from the ground is above zero. So this little line here is basically our vertical speed indicator. So this is a thousand, two thousand, four thousand, and then going down if I'm descending, you know, I'm descending at a thousand feet um, per minute, I'm descending at 2,000 feet a minute, and so forth. But that's what those are. So as long as this green arrow is up, you know, and, and normally I'd say, you know, get it to 1,000, get it to 1,500 on takeoff with a plane like this. You know, with a propeller plane, you're not necessarily going to take off at, at that kind of an angle because you just don't have the speeds to do it. But with a jet, you can. So, but you, once you have that, you can retract your gear. That will lessen the wind drag. Again, thrust and drag, so your engines are producing thrust. The friction of the air on the surfaces of the plane are producing drag. You're decreasing your drag. It allows you to go faster with the thrust you have. And then lastly, you're going to bring your flaps up to standard flight, which is going to be zero. And there's indicators usually that tell you you don't want to be going faster than this with flaps out because otherwise you could do damage to your airframe. So again, depending on what your settings are in the flight simulator, it may not matter. Um, you know, if you don't have all of that turned on, you'd be able to fly that way. But again, to properly fly, you don't want to do that. So that is the things you need to know for takeoff. That is what we will do. I will try to call those things out as I'm going so you can see the instruments, you can see things. I'm going to kind of put my view down a little bit so that you can see things. But what you're basically looking for, engine speed here, flaps here, landing gear here, vertical speed here. If I'm hitting VR and my actual speed uh, you know, airspeed is here. Those are the key things you're going to need to know and, and kind of keep an eye on to properly take off. And so I suggest you do this yourself many, many times. Your goal is always understand, know your aircraft, know your controls, and learn how to fly it. That's always going to be your target with any aircraft you decide that, hey, this is one I want to use within the sim. Just like any pilot, you're going to want to get very familiar with that aircraft. That takes time. You're going to have to do multiple flights. You're going to have to do various things. But the nice thing is, like, you can take off, and then you can pause the sim, and you can exit, and you can just respawn back here at the end of the runway or over on the tarmac or, or over on the uh, apron and do it all over again. Like, you don't have to do the whole flight. You know, that's the difference between the flight sim and... And whatever so if it's hey I'm practicing takeoff with this plane you can do 50 of them a lot faster than you could in a real plane because you don't have to actually take off fly the pattern come back land do it again you can just take off and once you're a thousand feet above the ground you can stop let's go ahead we're gonna turn off the brake so that went away there and then I'm gonna rev up the engine so I'm pressing my throttle button can you probably hear them spooling up, but you can see the number. And you can see those white lines rising, so now we're over 100. Now you can see numbers, I'm at 60, I'm at 70. You're wanting to use your rudder to keep yourself going down the center line, so usually a little bit of right rudder, there's 120. And there you go, and you can see it took off very easily. My indicator is in the positive, so I'm going to gear up. Now you can see the little red line above the speed went way up, but that also meant my angle of climb went way up, so I'm going to lower myself because right now I'm climbing at 2,000. We're going to head over here so that we're kind of going in the right direction. We're at the outer marker, that's what that beep is. You're going to want to throttle down because you don't want to go over speed because that will also damage the airframe. And now, you know, so technically I'm above my flaps, so I'm going to set this. Whoops, I, I did a bad thing. I started climbing very, very quickly. All right. So part of this is I didn't slow down fast enough. You don't need that much power 
once you're off the ground. Like you can put your engines down pretty quickly. Because, yeah, I'm still climbing at like 3,500 feet or 2,500 feet. But that is takeoff. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on a little bit here. But, uh, you know, that is what you need. Flaps up, gear up, get yourself climbing, and then, you know, get yourself going. And, you know, then you're into the climb aspect of the flight, which I will cover next time. So if you've enjoyed this and have not dropped a like, please consider doing that. And if you have not become a subscriber yet, please consider that as well. And I will see you next time.